Any video game can be reduced to a series of steps the player takes in order to progress and complete the game. Some games make these steps more linear, while others give the player agency to tackle them in the order they see fit. The Quest module allows you to easily design and manage your game's progress, cutting down complexity, and simplifying how and when the player is ready to advance. To create a new quest, right-click on the Project panel and select Create, Game Creator, Quests, Quest. This will create a new asset with a set of parameters to fill upon selecting it. Title, Description, Color, and Sprite are fields used by interface elements to visually identify this particular quest. For example, we'll give this quest the name Join the Blacksmith Guild. The Type field lets you choose between Normal or Hidden and determines whether it's displayed on interfaces. The Sort Order value is used to organize quests. A higher value will display quests above others with lower values. The section below is where the content of a quest is organized. A quest is composed of a hierarchy of tasks where each one can contain other subtasks, and these subtasks may contain even more subtasks. This allows both creating simple or very complex quest lines. A task always starts as inactive. Only after activating a task can it become completed, abandoned, or failed. To create a new task, click on one of the two buttons on the toolbar. The left button creates a new task as a sibling of the currently selected one, while the right button creates one as a child. Selecting a task displays its information on the right side. The name, description, color, and sprite fields work exactly the same way as the quest fields and are used to display information on user interface elements. The Is Hidden checkbox also works exactly the same way as the quest type, but allows you to hide a specific task from a list. The Completion field defines how this task and its children behave. A task with no children can be completed using the instruction Complete Task. However, if a task contains subtasks, the completion field determines how a task behaves. There are four different options. The Subtasks in Sequence is the default one and the most commonly used. It requires all child subtasks to be completed in descending order. Each subtask is automatically activated upon completing the previous one. The task is also automatically completed when all subtasks are completed. If any subtask is abandoned or failed, the task will also become abandoned or failed. Subtasks in combination is similar to the previous one, but activates all subtasks and allows them to be completed in any order. Just like before, abandoning or failing any subtask results in the task also being abandoned or failed. This type of task is useful for investigation sections where the player is expected to complete all subtasks but in which the order doesn't matter. The Any Subtask option, as its name suggests, requires the player to only finish one subtask in order to consider the task is completed. Abandoning or failing a subtask won't automatically finish the subtask unless all subtasks are abandoned or failed. This type of task is useful when creating branching narratives, where the player is expected to choose between two or more choices and the path diverts from there. The manual option neither automatically activates nor completes any subtasks, and it's up to you to configure these if the previous ones don't suit your needs. There is a darker area below with a field called Used Counter. A task counter is used to automatically complete a task upon reaching a specific number. A counter always starts at zero and its value is determined depending upon the used counter field. By default, a task has no counter value and must be completed using the complete task instruction. Changing its type to value will display a new field below named count to 
which is the value to reach in order to consider the task is completed. All counters start with a value of zero and can be changed using the change task value instruction. For example, a task that asks the player to kill five boars will have a count to value of five and each boar killed will add one unit to the counter. Upon reaching a value of five, the task will be completed. The other counter type is called property and is a bit more advanced. Instead of manually setting the current value of a task, it synchronizes it with a dynamic value. For example, if the inventory module is installed, we can complete the task when the player owns at least 10 health potions. To do that, we set the count to field to 10. We change the value from field to retrieve the amount of health potions from the player's inventory. Lastly, the check when field is an event that should run whenever the counter is updated. In our case, we want to update the task counter when the player's inventory content changes. There are a few fields with instructions at the end of the task that are called under different circumstances. For example, the on activate is executed whenever the task is activated. This can be used to activate other quests after completing certain tasks, displaying notifications on screen when a task is activated, etc. At the end of the quests, there's another collection of instruction lists that are executed whenever the quest is set inactive, active, completed, abandoned, or failed. Now that we know how to create a quest and manage its tasks, let's make a real example. Let's say we're making a fantasy RPG game and wandering around when we meet this old miller. If we speak to him, he will tell us about his sick daughter and that he can't leave the house because he needs to take care of her. He then asks us to gather 10 magical thistles and buy a bottle of alcohol to brew a decoction that will heal his daughter. Now that we have the basic structure of the quest, let's see how to create it. First of all, we need to create a new quest asset, which will contain information about this quest line. We'll call this Help Sick Daughter and set the title to Help the Miller's Daughter. Let's add a new trigger on the Miller's character and set it to On Interact. Upon interacting with the character, we will skip playing this conversation and jump straight to activating the quest. To do so, we'll use the Quest Activate instruction. We'll also add the Quest Track instruction so that we automatically track this quest as soon as we receive it. Quests can be tracked by multiple characters, although it is most common for just the player to track them all. We can add the Journal component onto the player's game object, and it will be able to track any quests that it is given. If we click Play and interact with the Miller, we can see in the player's journal that the quest, Help Sick Daughter, appears in blue, which means it's currently active. Now that we have created our first quest, let's create the necessary tasks to organize it. To do so, we'll create a new task and name it Help the Miller. We'll create another task called Return to the Miller, which we'll use to return to our quest giver in order to deliver the ingredients and collect the reward. Upon speaking with the Miller, we need to activate two tasks, one for gathering 10 thistles and another one to get the bottle of alcohol. Let's create two new subtasks below the first one, which are used to gather the necessary ingredients. We'll call the first one, Collect 10 Magic Thistles. And the second one, Find a Bottle of Alcohol. Notice the icon of all tasks is the same? This icon represents the type of task, and in this particular case, it's a sequence one. If we run these two subtasks in sequence, the player will need to complete the upper one first and then the second one in strict order. 
We want to give the player agency on which of the tasks to tackle first. So we'll change the upper task completion mode from sequence to subtasks in combination. As we can see, the icon of subtasks has changed and now means that upon activating the quest, the first task will get activated as well as the two subtasks, which can be tackled in any order. Let's click play and see the results. As soon as we interact with the miller, we can see how the player now has the quest activated, as well as the first task, which is to help him, and both of its subtasks. The quest module also comes with a few game-ready prefabs that will help you build your game's UI. To use them, we first need to install them. To do so, let's head over to the top toolbar and select Game Creator, Install, and a new window will appear. Let's select it and install the package called UI under Quests. This package contains a collection of prefabs, such as a journal, a heads-up display, and a notification system. Let's drag and drop these three components onto the scene and see how we automatically have a quick view of the currently tracked quest on the right side, as well as a complete journal window. Okay, so everything's working great so far. Now we need to define how to complete each of these two subtasks. The second one is probably the easiest. We'll add a new character and we'll call it Alchemist. This character should be placed somewhere in town, but we'll leave it around here for simplicity. We'll add a new trigger and set it to On Interact. Once we interact with the alchemist, we should display a dialogue where we either convince him to give us a bottle of alcohol, purchase, or steal it. Either way, we'll skip all that and we'll simply use the instruction task complete for the corresponding task. Let's move on to the second subtask. We want to have a counter that upon reaching a value of 10, the subtask is automatically completed. To do so, we can change the Use Counter field from None to Value. As we can see, there's a new field below called Count To, which is the targeted value to reach. We'll set this value to 10. Now let's go over the scene and create a sphere. With a bit of creativity, we'll imagine this is a magic thistle. We'll add a trigger component and change its type to on trigger enter so that the player appears to pick it up when bumping into it. We'll use the task value instruction and we'll configure it so it adds one unit to our quest's task. Now let's drag and drop this object onto our project panel to create a prefab from it. By doing so, we can scatter multiple copies of this object around the scene while still being able to modify the prefab in case we want to change something. Great! All that's left to do is to complete the Return to Miller task and collect the reward. To do so, we can simply add the Task Complete instruction right after the Miller's tasks. As for the reward, we can either create a new trigger with the option On Quest Complete or we can add an instruction on the On Complete instructions at the end of the quest asset. In our case, we'll simply display the message Thank you, here's your reward in the console. Let's enter play mode and see this in action. As we can see, the first time we interact with the Miller, he'll activate the quest, which trickles down the activation all the way to the two subtasks. 
We can choose in which order we want to complete them. We can talk to the alchemist to complete the second task, and then collect each of the magical thistles. Upon gathering the tenth thistle, the task gets automatically completed. Because we also have all subtasks completed, the parent task is also completed, and the next task becomes active. We can now go back to the miller and interact with him to complete the task, which also completes the quest and receive our reward. That's all for now. Remember, you can read about all this and more in the documentation, which we'll link down in the description. We also recommend checking out the multiple example scenes bundled with the quest module, which can be accessed from the install window. Start your journey now with the quest module for Game Creator. Available now on the Unity Asset Store.